shit. Oh man, how did I mess that up? Mm. Oh man, how did I mess that up? <laughs> oh man, how did I mess this up? Good. What is even going on right now? <clears throat> All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, Mother Truckers, which means it's Mother Truck and Vlog Day. And yeah, I got a full-on action-packed vlog planned out for you guys tonight. I can't do that thing anymore. Well, I put all the timestamps up here. Haven't been able to do that for a number of years. But my main man, and he has cemented himself in my main man you know, status of hierarchy of like main men, Jeremy V. He's in the chat. He's going to be collecting all of those timestamps and there'll be the first pinned comment underneath this video. Additionally, I pillage his timestamps and I just throw chapters on this whole video. But welcome, you guys. Like I said, full on action packed vlog for you guys tonight. Uh, uh, beer check. Definitely uh, talk a little bit about what I've been vaping. Got too much stuff on the desk lately. Just way too much stuff on the desk lately. We do have another box. You guys. Box, box number three, box number three. Or wait, is this box number three? Yeah, I think it's box number three. Box number three from the closet. Uh, I do have a little bit of mail. I actually have a bunch of vape mail that came in and we do have a very random liquid tasting that you guys, once again, are going to help me try to you know, decide which one. I usually pull out like two or three sometimes and I need help deciding. And I'm gonna need your guys's, guys's? I don't like that word. I need your guys' help to uh, to help me decide. But before we get too far into this vlog, I want to do that thing that's my new favorite thing where I get to hear from one of my subscribers. Vaping is better oh, what the fuck, than Cuomo? smoking. Shut up. Technically, yes. <laughs> but so what? I don't know. I don't know. I just like doing that. I do. I do right now, actually, truly and honestly want to do that thing where I get to hear from one of my subscribers. So right now I'd like to hear from, uh, I'm going to point over here again. I'd like to hear from Caleb. Yo, yo, what's going on, Graham? Um, sitting there doing some editing, uh, watching your videos actually. Um, just thought I'd say, Hey, What's going on? Keeping it cloudy like always, rocking the Bonza from Bogan. Love everything you're doing for advocacy and uh, always look forward to your videos every Thursday. Um, Southern Alabama, shout out to Cyclops Vapor and uh, I'd like to plug my own channel, Vaping with Caleb. Um, New camp, new YouTube channel. Uh, we're just getting started. Hopefully, gonna be some good content. And hopefully, it only gets better from here on in. But uh, do what you do, brother. Peace. Boosh! There, my stream. Fuck Stream Deck. Fuck this stupid thing. It never works when you want it to. It's a pain in the ass to set up. Do not recommend the stream deck. But yeah, boosh, absolutely, Caleb. Here's some advice if you're going to be streaming. Yeah, great. Fucking Stream Deck. What did I tell you? It's this is a hundred percent. I think I'm sorry. It's it's it'll get back. It'll it'll catch back up because of the lag. Yeah, it'll be. And then I'm expecting a text from Danielle and a text from Michelle Lynn. There you go. Yep. There's the text from Danielle. Appreciate you always having my back. And then, oh Michelle, no Michelle tonight. Oh that's okay. That's okay. Now listen. <laughs> I'm blaming Stream Deck for this. Stream Deck does that thing. So look, this is a Stream Deck. This here's the here's the secret to what fucking all the streamers use. And I have like 
my little bumpers and things put in here and like I can control my microphone. And sometimes what happens is you press the button and nothing will happen. And then you press the button and then nothing will happen. And then you press the button and nothing will happen. And then you press the button and nothing will happen. And then the fifth time that you press the button, it'll register all of those button clicks. So it'll go like, and then leave it off. I'm fully blaming technology. That was a little bit of a, uh, that was a, that was a little bit of a dangle clack right out of the gate here, you guys, but we're going to shout out Caleb's YouTube because why not? I put a link in the chat. I put a link in the description. Caleb sent me a video. So of course I'm going to shout out his YouTube. Now, if anybody else out there, here's the part you missed. If anybody else out there has a video similar to Caleb's that they want to see featured on this vlog video program, the Thursday vlog video, it's easier than you think. Just send them on over to me. Nick at grimgreen.com can be literally anything you want to shout out your Instagram account, your Twitter, your YouTube, your favorite shop, your least favorite shop, your favorite liquid, your least favorite liquid, your favorite RDA, your favorite RTA, your family, your wife, your husband, your brother, your cousin, your aunt, your uncle, you know? <laughs> if you're... <laughs> Just send it on over to me, nick at grimgrin.com. Just mark your subject, that one thing. Chances are I'll see the attachment and we'll end up using it here in the vlog. Before we get to any beer though, which is crazy, before we get to any beer, there's already uh, a bunch of super chats that happened before the stream even started, you guys. Before the stream even started. So let's do a couple of these super chats. This is the only time you get the full bumper too. Uh, Slim, Slim, right out of the gate. Appreciate you, Slim. You didn't say nothing. You didn't have to. That's for you. Kevin, that's very gracious of you. He says, uh, can you give a shout out to Bella tonight? We lost her in the fire too. She was my travel buddy. And in my opinion, the best dog ever. Yeah, of course. Oh my God, Kevin. I'm so sorry to hear that. That's for Bella. Whole vlog tonight's for Bella. That makes me so sad. Appreciate you being here, Kevin. Chin up, brother. Uh, level five Loki, how have you been, man? Uh, yo, yo, great vlog day to all. Four years cigarette free today. Yeah, just waiting for that type two so I can put this bat tip crazy DHD Chiquita tip on it. Listen, I don't know if that Chiquita tip's gonna do you any favors on the type two. Type two is closer than it's ever been, you guys. I We did some type two updates on Tuesday, bro, Tuesday. If you wanna, you wanna know about it, you just gotta go back and watch it. Vaping Cowboy. Have you heard loud and far are a staple? You are heard loud and far and are a staple to the vape community. Bring back some R&R snapback caps. <laughs> Huge fan. Keep on vaping, everyone. Look, vaping cowboy. Look, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, Vargson Fog, he says, uh, shout out to the crab people. It's been, it's been a while, man. Are they still a thing? Yeah. Crab people, keep an eye out, you know, just... Be, be wary, be cautious when you go to the big crab people are a thing. Cheers, Grim. Damn it, man. Thanks for all you do. Thank you, damn it, man. I appreciate that. Sergio, what the? Sergio, bro, I love you. That's very gracious of you. I would say borderline too gracious of you, Sergio, but I appreciate you being here. I really, really do. Uh, Cloudy Chats says, uh, thanks for sharing my Insta story, Grim. Oh, yeah. Might get a bit of traction on this old vape shop manager's Insta page. Sure. Look, Cloudy Chats, if you want to send me a video to feature in the vlog, you can shout out your own Instagram and we'll try to go we'll try to, you know, herd some people your direction. That might be the only bottle of pony on acid down here in New Zealand. Peace out. Peace out to you, Cloudy Chats. Hope you're glad you're enjoying that uh, pony on acid. Daniel Two Trips 86. How, uh, have I super chatted lately? No. But so what? Yeah, exactly. Just pull a Cuomo and say so, <laughs> so what to everything. Appreciate you being here, Daniel. Uh, Joey, that's very gracious of you. Just want to say thank you to you and Casey Pickle for getting my yo yo shirt to me as soon as possible. Love it. Fuck yeah. I'm glad you like it. Enjoy it. Wear it proudly. All of, the, all of our merch is just, we pack it, we ship it. I take it personally to the, to the mailboxes and they ship it out. And uh, I'm glad you got it, Joey. I'm not even making any attempts tonight to th like, the idea of wearing a flannel right now, it's like 100 degrees in the valley right now. How hot is it right now? 98 degrees outside and not the boy band. It's 98 actual degrees outside. None of the degrees outside were banging Jessica Simpson for that long. It's just 98 degrees outside. 
it's like 99 degrees in my office. So flannel was just off the table. Not even going to pretend to wear flannel. Uh, one last super chat here from Brett. Uh, yo, yo, the one good thing about self quarantine is I'm not at work and I can watch the vlog live versus later. Fingers crossed. All right, Brett for Bella. That's right. Hashtag for Bella. We got, we got one here from swamp thing, swamp thing. Uh, it's all gravy, dude. Thanks. Well, welcome swamp thing. I'm glad it's all gravy. Matt sinister. I got own boys, melon punch so far, all watermelon someday, someday. I will get Dwayne's Melon Punch, but today is not that day. So instead, we get Yak Song. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the Any sky. Time of year. Any time dun, of bro, year. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I believe I can fly. <laughs> it's never not funny, which you know what that means? That means it's always funny. God, I love Dwayne. I miss Dwayne. I love the Yawk song. What we're going to do right now, it's time. It's that time of the evening. It's that time of the vlog time where we have a beer. So let's have a beer. And the beer that we are having tonight, get a load of that crazy label, pink and green broccoli all over it. This beer came to my office via Fobo for British eyes only. I haven't seen you in the in the chat tonight, but we are Foboing. We're doing some for British eyes only beer. This is uh, Other Half Brewing Broccoli. It's an Imperial IPA, only 8%, so that's fine. I know I actually know nothing about this beer. I did no research whatsoever. So let's Google this. Other half broccoli. Other half broccoli. How do you spell broccoli? You know, apparently not like that. Other half broccoli. Okay, I don't want to look at anything right now. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to sway my opinion of this beer, but we got some other half broccoli, seven and a half percent. Imperial IPA, going to be pouring it tonight into my uh, Grim Army pint glass. Sorry, they're all sold out right now. Don't worry. I think we're going to get more as soon as humanly possible. It's pouring that like, you know, typical hazy IPA-ness. Hot, hazy IPA action. Get a load of those sparkling top notes. This just looks delicious. A little bit of head on there. Uh, I've always said that I'm not a, like a really huge IPA fan, but every time I have an IPA, I really enjoy it. So... I probably could be a little bit more of an IPA fan than I thought, but uh, cheers. Here's to you guys. Thanks for being here. Hope you got something cold and delicious next to you. I mean, obviously with a vape too. I hope you have a vape and something cold and delicious. Could be root beer. Could be water. You could be staying hydrated. Yep. That's spectacular. It's super piney, super hoppy. I get a whole mess of upfront sweetness to it. It's got that like, and I don't mean this in like the, the, the slang term of the word, but it's got like a dankness to it. There's like a dankness, like a, not a negative dankness, but like a good, like, see, this is going to sound bad, but it, it has like that, like musty basement. <laughs> There's no way to say that without it sounding negative, but it's got like this sweet, sweet, piney, musty basement type of flavor to it. it that, it's freaking delicious. It's delicious. You get a lot of tartness. It's even a little bit astringent on the finish, kind of dries out your mouth just a little bit. Bro, British eyes. That's a freaking beer. Also, let's welcome our new moderator tonight, John Haymaker. Appreciate you being here consistently and constantly. Uh, you're always a positive influence in the chat, John Haymaker, and uh, you've been promoted. You've been promoted. That other than Dwayne, you're the you're the only other moderator that wasn't like given moderator status on like the first night of the vlog like a few years ago. But welcome, John Haymaker. Now, if we're gonna look on Beer Advocate at this, 
It's got, wow, it has a really good score. It's got a 94. This is an outstanding beer. Where is it outstanding? I don't know. In a fucking broccoli patch. Outstanding beer. What do these reviewers have to say about it? Five or six week old, still good. Yellow, hazy color, mild lacing, smells of pineapple, lemon, lime, and a bit grassy. Yeah, I definitely get that grassy. Taste is dank. <coughs> Taste is dank. His words, not mine. Dank, juicy, citrusy, a bit of bitterness on the back end. Yeah, it gets a little astringent. Light to medium bodied, crisp, easy sip, sipper. Uh -oh. Burp life. Uh -oh. More burp life. Easy drinking. Dang. Now, I don't really have anything that I don't, I don't think I have anything I can pair with this exactly. Come on, Chrome, cooperate. There's going to be dangle clacks tonight. I can feel it. I, there's already been dangle clacks. I can just sense it. Um, own boys mango might actually pair really super well with this. So let's give it a shot. Yeah, that's awesome. That's complete awesomeness. Super awesome. They complement each other so well. The liquid actually brings out a little bit of like the sweetness in the beer. Dang, guys. Well, we're rocking now. We got a beer to last me hopefully the rest of the vlog. Hopefully the rest of the vlog. But uh, I guess what I'll do right now is just a couple things I've been vaping. Like I said, I've got way too much stuff on my desk. Of course, there's always going to be three billet boxes. There's just never not a chance of three billet boxes. Got bluegrass right here. That's the silver billet box with the honeycomb doors. Evil aliens on the inside with some of that panther tobacco, the, the creamy tobacco, I believe. It's Fucking delicious. Noli designs, uh, you know, sort of wonky whistle tip, drip tip on there. Yeah, it's beautiful. That's a beautiful vape. Got Golden Boy, of course. Hakuzetta on the inside. Peach Among Worlds there. Yeah, that's awesome. And lastly, I got uh, I got Harold here with the straight up supply code. Glow in the dark panels. Boxer V2 is on the inside with freaking Danny Lolo's Lemon Life, the Cherry Limeade. I love this juice. I love it. It's spectacular, but only in the Boxer V2. The Boxer V2 brings out everything beautiful in this juice. And every time I taste that liquid in anything else, it just tastes like lemon rinds and I can't get away from it. Now, if we're moving into some other stuff in mouth to lung land, this is the uh, Caliburn G. Can't get enough of it. Six milligram uh, Moharno's mango on the inside. Uh, Caliburn G, it's amazing. In fact, I think I'm gonna try to do a review for that like as soon as humanly possible. Pro now, it could be next week. This is something from Vaporesso called the X, uh, X something, X iron. It's a little bit, uh, it's kind of whatever. It's kind of meh. It's a little bit generic, but I'd be lying if I said it wasn't a pretty solid restricted lung. Yeah, pretty tasty too. Now, if we're going to hang out in mouth to lung land for a while, this has been my all day, every day banger. This is the Hass Tour. Uh, from uh, Cthulhu Mods, that's the Pioneer RTA in mouth to lung mode with the one millimeter airflow insert underneath. This is Halo's Turkish effing tobacco. I love it. It's just my favorite tobacco uh, literally of all time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So good, 12 milligram. I also got another uh, mouth to lung here. This is the Nautilus Prime. It's pretty dope. I think I'm gonna try to do a review for this really, really soon as well. I've been kind of cranking through coil heads on this. Haven't been super satisfied with the coil head life longevity. Maybe I just got one or two that were kind of junky, but it's been fine. I don't love the airflow, but I'll save it for the review. But that's delicious. As you saw, it's the uh, Vupu Drag Max. Just fucking love this thing. Can't get enough of it. Oh boy, mango. This is the point .2 uh, PNP coil on the inside. Freaking delicious. This guy, 
which I think uh, I think I'm gonna upload my review for these box mods uh, Saturday. I think I'm not 100% sure. Still hanging in there with that Cloud Chasers Inc. Uh, <laughs> freaking gigantic RTA on top. Which one was this? Which one was this? What was the name of this RTA? Centurion, Centurion V2, big 30 millimeter guy. And even weirder is that uh, Borgio mung bean on the inside. I, I love it. I can't get enough of it. This is my cloud chasey sort of like go-to cloud chasey setup. 133 watts. That's the highest I've ever vaped in my life. Yeah, and it's fucking banging. And then lastly... Certainly lastly, but certainly not leastly, it's that Method 1 mech mod that I got last week in the vlog with uh, freaking Vader and Stormtroopers all over it. It's got that really unique sort of side fire guy switch. I just love it. I just love it. Titanium recoil on top. This is Super Good's butter number two. It's that jammy dodger cookie. It's like jam, cookie, cream, something like that. Uh, this has been in my hand more often than not. It's just such a good flavor. And the recoil just vapes so great on that mech mod. But uh, let me get this nicotine warning off of here because some of the products featured in tonight's vlog video can contain nicotine. They don't natively come with nicotine included. That's up to the user to decide how much or how little nicotine they would like to use in their vaping product. But these don't come with nicotine, but nicotine can sometimes be addictive. It can kind of be, it's about the same as a cup of coffee. Caffeine and nicotine, very similar, very, uh, you know, as far as addiction level goes, that, that's kind of what you're looking at there. Uh, it, there's no evidence that exists that shows that it damages developing youth brains, <laughs> regardless of what you see on the news. There's no evidence that that exists, but there is nicotine and I'm a huge fan and I love nicotine. So yeah, dude, here we go. What shit? What should I do next? Let's do, uh, were there any more super chats? Yeah, I think there was more super chats. Let's do some super chats before we get to the news. That's it, that's all you get, just a black screen. You don't get the full intro anymore. It's just too long. My time is too valuable. Uh, uh, Matt said, Trey Watt, uh, yo, yo, Nick, hey man, wondering, it was just you who coined the phrase truth butter. Also, we got a new English bulldog puppy today and his name is Grim. What? I love that. You named your English bulldog puppy Grim. Fuck, that's cool. I love that so much. Good beer, new puppy, and a vlog. Cheers to you. Absolutely. And no, no, it wasn't I that invented the term truth butter. Hang on. I will get you. I will show you who invented truth butter. Uh, it was Matthew. Fellow named Matthew Hang commented on Tuesday Bro Tuesday and said, hey, it isn't rage sweat, it's truth butter. And I uh, I just love that beyond reason. So truth butter just became something I adopted. Truth butter, uh, bass and bang. You helped me get into vaping back in 2012. Well, I'm glad I was around in 2012. I'm happy to help. That's what I'm here for. I appreciate you, bass and bang. Thanks for hanging out. Part-time vapor, that's very gracious of you. Peach. Here's a peach to you. Here's a double peach. There's some war machine for you. Anyway, good on you, part-time vapor. Appreciate you being here, man. Yeah, and it was Michael. Michael, no, Matthew. Matthew invented truth butter. Matthew. It was Matthew that invented truth butter. In fact, I need to hydrate real quick. Let's stay hydrated, hydro homies. Oh, I love water. I'm glad that I love water so much. It makes it easier to stay hydrated. Hydro homies. Uh, yeah, so like a lot of YouTube influencers, Ryan Hall, for example, who's killing it on TikTok, by the way, uh, this vlog is actually sponsored by uh, The Coldest Water. Yeah, I'll have a link down in the description. Use the code GRIM, you get 10% off. Truly and honestly, this is the only water bottle that I ever want to use literally for the rest of my life. It keeps my water cool and crisp and refreshing for literally days. Like, like at least 24 hours, maybe longer. Maybe longer than 24 hours. It will keep your liquid cool. Get the flip top. 
you know, I would suggest getting the flip top. Plus, it's a perfect little palette for stickers. We got sticker packs on the site. Nicotine is not a crime. Truth Butter. We got banana stickers, but those are just for patrons. We got Grim Army stickers. Those are for everybody. Mm. Yeah, so uh, shout out Coldest Water Bottle. I have a link down in the description. Now, it's time to uh, look. I'm going to try to, like always, like always, you know, I'm going to try to keep this news interesting. And we're going to keep this news quick because we have a, a huge retro box, a huge retro vaping box to go through. Huge. This might be the biggest one so far. There's bigger ones. Don't even trip. But let's get into some news and advocacy right now. News and advocacy, yeah. News and advocacy, yeah. So I just wanted to throw uh, a few things out there at you. Hang on. Where did my, uh, my browser go? There it is. Just want to throw a few things out there at you. You know, news and advocacy, it's something that's really near and dear to my heart. I find I think it's something that's really, really very important within vaping. I think if you are in vaping right now and you are profiting money monetarily from the vape industry, you should be talking about news and advocacy. You should be dedicating some time to communicating what's going on out there getting people to do calls to actions, getting people to make phone calls. I feel like that's the least that we could do for an industry that has literally saved our lives, changed my life completely, completely. So that's why we do, uh, that's why we do news and advocacy. Plus, you know, it's kind of interesting. Uh, first things first, just get, oh, as always, it's the Veritas cohort study. There's a huge study right now being organized. It's for people that have smoked less than a thousand cigarettes total in their life, but are current vapors. And the reason that this Veritas cohort study exists is because sometimes, I mean, the majority of the time when they're doing studies on vapors, vapors are generally ex-smokers. So they'll find like some damage in the lungs, things like this, but this is attributed not to vaping, but to smoking because the person smoked for whatever, 10, 20, 30 years beforehand. So what they're trying to do is look at the quote unquote harmful effects of vaping in smokers that have rare, that have barely smoked, barely smoked. So if you meet that criteria and you're in the certain areas, go sign up, be a part of this. I'll have a link down in the description for the Veritas cohort study because I think it's going to be great. Wanted to throw this out there again too. World Vapors Alliance, great organization. I mean, just a really truly great organization. I'll have a link down in the description, but you can help. You know, you can be, you can stay informed. You can follow them on Twitter. You can take part in all of the, uh, you know, all of the news and reporting that they have going on over there. It's just the World Vapors Alliance. Uh, I like this organization. We are a global community now. I think even just by this chat. I know there's people from the UK here. I know there's people from New Zealand here. I know there's people from all over the world here. And we're a global vape community. This is global vape fam time. So no matter where you are in the world, you can get plugged in with the uh, World Vapors Alliance. Now, moving on from that, there are <sighs> burps happening. That's fine. <laughs> Did I... Technically, did I burp on camera? Well, technically, yes, but... So what? Cuomo, got my back every time. So what? There are a bunch, bunch of calls to actions happening. I don't know why there are so many calls to actions right now. Just feels weird that right now, you know, during our nationwide pandemic and there's hundreds of thousands of people out of work, hundreds of thousands of people furloughed, hundreds of thousands of people laid off, you know, staying home sick and, you know, grandparents are dying. I don't know why there's, they, they're taking so much time, so much time out of their day to still go after vaping, but there is still protect vape mail, active CASA call to action for vape mail. This is rejecting S1253. This hasn't been voted on yet but there's a good chance it could get voted on literally at any time. I've thrown that out there at least a quadrillion times. Do, just do the call to action. Takes you no time. Just do the call to action. I think it would be great. Um, we got some more here though. There, there's more coming up and we went into these uh, a little bit more in depth on the last Tuesday Bro Tuesday, but there's also an Oregon 
call to action. We're voting no on Measure 108. If Measure 108 passes, Oregon will join the ranks of like California, Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, Vermont, uh, I don't know, probably other states, Ohio, where in the state, vaping is more expensive than smoking, which means if you were going to decide to use nicotine and you're thinking, I, I'd like to use some nicotine, it would make more sense for you financially just to smoke <laughs> than to use the far, far, far less harmful uh, vapor product. That is crazy. In Oregon, we have to vote no on measure 108, please. <laughs> Please, please vote no on Measure 108. Additionally, up there in uh, good old Colorado, there's a Colorado call to action for all my Colorado vapors. Vote no on Prop EE. Vote no on Prop EE. And this is basically kind of the same thing. What Prop EE does in Colorado is it uh, creates a 30% tax on nicotine-containing vapor products, which it, it, uh, it's infuriating. They're going to increase this tax incrementally until 2027, where it's going to get up to 62%. That will make California, or that will make Colorado, joining the coalition of anti-vaping states where vaping is going to be more expensive than just buying a pack of cigarettes and slowly killing yourself. Make vaping more expensive. Sure. Well done, Colorado. Real progressive state you got there. Just like California and Nazi Chusets. Yeah, I said it. Um, we know that taxes on cigarettes are to dissuade people from using them. What's the point of a tax on a vapor product? Is that to keep people from using them? Is that to keep smokers smoking? Look, it certainly feels like that. Now, I had a call to action for good old Arizona, but I think today was the hearing. According to Casa, today was the hearing, and I have not heard anything. I'll still post a link down in the description, and I'll post a link in the chat right now because there is a uh, – you can leave a comment for this flavor ban, but uh, Phoenix, Arizona, flavor ban. Don't know if it happened. Don't know if it went through. Rising Phoenix Vapory, are you in Phoenix, Arizona? Because if your flavor ban I may have just passed just today. <laughs> Sorry, for the <laughs> Sorry for the bad news. Might have just passed just today. So that's something, you know, to keep an eye on. Eye on, I guess. And additionally, now we went real in depth on this on Tuesday, Bro Tuesday, which I would encourage you to go check out. It's a great little program there. Michigan has a flavor ban too, dude. Stop the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services flavor ban. This isn't just a flavor ban. This is a Montana style Governor Gretchen Whitmer special Permanent, permanent flavor ban. Permanent flavor ban. Uh, that's unreasonable to me. Uh, Gretchen Whitmer holds a special evil place in my heart because, well, she made me a criminal and put me out of business, and that's fine. You know, government overreach, it's whatever. Now she wants to do a permanent flavor ban in the state, so there is an active call to action for that as well. Uh, it's ridiculous when I hear these politicians talking about needing to follow the science and then they don't follow the science on anything. And that's just enough to, to drive me insane. But there you go. That's all the CASA calls to actions. I'll have links, like I said, down in the description for all of the CASA calls to actions and also everything I'm about to talk about because there's a little bit more of news and advocacy. We had, uh, we had some great news from, uh, Reuters. You hip to Reuters? Well, the big headline on this Reuters article is, yeah, vapes more effective to quit smoking than gum or patch review fines. I think, uh, you know, I usually reserve this for Tuesday, bro, Tuesday, but let's do a little bit of story time with Groom Green because this is a quick little article. Vapes containing nicotine are more effective in helping people quit smoking than patches or gum. Yeah. And safer than cigarettes although more evidence is needed on their potential long-term impacts. Okay. A new review of evidence found on Wednesday. Sure. More evidence. Look, more evidence is always going to be good. You're always going to want more evidence, right? More evidence for everything. 
we have a lot of evidence on the long-term potential long-term impacts of, uh, of vapor products. You could draw a pretty fairly clear conclusion right now, long-term use of e-cigarettes, what that's going to do to someone, a spoiler alert, not much, not much other than having, you know, an addiction to something, not much. These findings from a review, which included evidence from 50 studies around the world, suggested vaping could boost the number of people who stop smoking. Holy shit. Welcome to what we all learned in like 2010. Sorry. I, I got to try to keep the obscenities down. There is now evidence that electronic cigarettes with nicotine are likely to increase the chances of quitting successfully compared to nicotine gum or patches, said Jamie Hartman Boyce, an expert at the Cochrane Tobacco Addiction Group who co-led this review. Now, the Cochrane Tobacco Addiction Group is kind of a big deal. This is kind of a big deal that the Cochrane Tobacco Addiction Group is now saying that, yes, vaping almost twice as successful as any NRT currently on the, on the market. The review is conducted by Cochrane, an organization that pools the best scientific research to help assess the relative effectiveness of health interventions. E-cigarettes have been around for about a decade and increased in popularity significantly in the recent years. You're going to see the kind of spin that this publication still puts on this. Unlike gums and patches, they mimic cigarette smoking because they are handheld and generate vapor. Hmm. Who knew that that's something that would be appealing to a smoker? Inhaling, exhaling, hand to mouth. Who could have seen this coming? The World Health Organization says tobacco kills up to half of all its users, clocking up a death toll of more than 8 million people a year. We could save a billion lives. We could save at least 8 million lives every single year. A 2016 Cochrane review also found e-cigarettes were more likely to help smokers quit than nicotine patches or gum. But, you know, but the available body of evidence was limited at that time. A spate, and here's the twist, here's the spin that makes no sense, and I expected a little bit more from Reuters. A spate of vaping-related lung injuries and deaths in the United States last year threw a spotlight on vaping and e-cigarettes and prompted bans of some types of products. Yeah, we know now, despite what the World Health Organization and despite what Centers for Disease Control said, that these lung injuries, and I feel like a broken record when I say this, the lung injuries were from vitamin E acetate, bought illicit black market THC cartridges contaminated with vitamin E acetate had literally nothing to do with already regulated and legal nicotine vaping. Not one single case of Evoli had anything to do with nicotine vaping. This doesn't keep publications like Reuters from bringing it up. Con people constantly bring it up. And you know what? CDC does nothing to correct that misinformation. But the outbreak was not linked to vapes that contain nicotine. It appeared to be, it and appeared to be waning late last year as evidence grew that vitamin E acetate, there you go, okay. A cutting agent used in marijuana vapes could be behind the case, was. They should, they should just say was, was behind the case. 100% of the cases were due to vitamin E acetate Good Lord. The Cochrane team said they found no clear evidence in this review of serious harms from nicotine containing e-cigarettes, though they noted that the evidence is uncertain due to the still relatively small number of studies. Now, we got, we're in the hundreds now. We got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of studies. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of studies. Scientific consensus holds that electronic cigarettes are considerably less harmful than traditional cigarettes. Yeah but are not risk-free. Yeah. I, you know, they always like to throw that in there. You know, they say, well, they're considerably less harmful, but mm -mm -mm, they're not risk-free. Look, I don't think there's been a person, vapor, YouTuber, manufacturer, liquid maker, hardware maker, anybody, tobacco control, vape advocate, nobody has ever said risk-free. No one's ever said that. No one has ever said 100% risk-free. Here you go, just vape. Did you know? It's 100% risk-free, said nobody ever. 
Harm reduction. That's what it is. We're not claiming to be 100% risk-free, but by saying that, they're kind of insinuating, well, you know, the vapors, they tell you that it's 100% risk-free, even though it's really not 100% risk-free. I know, but it's an order of magnitude less harmful than burning deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes, Reuters. This ends with a little quote from John Britton, a respiratory medicine professor at Nottingham University, said the review was comprehensive and gave definitive confirmation that electronic cigarettes offer smokers an effective means of quitting. So what I want everybody to do is just tweet this article at Jerome Adams because he still thinks that vaping doesn't, doesn't help you quit smoking. Still thinks that. Let's all tweet this at Jerome Adams in, in a compassionate, you know, kind way. That's one of the things I'm trying to get away from on Twitter is uh, just being angry all the time. And just, you know, when I see a news outlet say, oh, well, you know, there's a link between COVID-19 and vaping, instead of getting on there and being like, fuck you, you know, you're full of shit, you're bought and paid for by big tobacco, you know, just being a keyboard warrior, you go, oh, hey, actually, uh, what about this data that I found? Or, oh, actually, I found this data that shows that there is no link between vaping and COVID. You know, maybe we can expand on this or start the discussion about this. You know, what's the old saying? You, you, win, you win more flies when you eat honey and not vinegar. You get more flies with honey than vinegar. Is that a saying? I feel like I'm saying that. <laughs> I feel like I'm saying that wrong. But it's true. A little bit of kindness goes a long way. People are way more way more willing to listen. And I, look, I can attest to this personally because comments and people on Twitter and people on Instagram will sometimes be, you know, rude. And I just don't, when, when, when I get rude comments or rude tweets or rude, you know, DMs, I don't know, rarely rude DMs, but when I get rude comments, they get ignored. I don't go, oh, I wonder what this guy has to say. Maybe this really rude person is making a really good point. If you have a really good point, you, there's no need to be rude, you know? You can be angry, and look, I get it, Logan. You can be angry. People are fucking dying. Eight million people a year just from cigarettes, and I get that. You catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. Okay, there you go, Danielle Jones. Appreciate that. Uh, and look, I get it. You can still be angry, but the approach, the approach needs to be a little bit different. Uh, and I'm a big, uh, you know, there, there's certain organizations like the Truth Initiative that you, I just get mad at and I just call them, you know, morons and clueless and uh, they don't follow science and things like that but when they're, you're dealing with people or certain you know groups and individuals just a little bit of kindness goes a little goes a long way there you know and for a while I was trying to be really nice to the governor of Massachusetts real nice to him you know he would post things about flavor bands and I'd comment and say you know or he'd post things about Evoli this was during Evoli he'd say oh e-cigarettes you know they're they're killing kids and, and they're sending kids to the hospitals and this, that, and the other. And so I would tweet at him, you know, vitamin E acetate, uh, you know, from Leafly or Rolling Stone and things like this. And I'd say, you know, Charlie Baker, I am very concerned about this as well. You know, this is really terrifying. Here's what I've found. It seems to be vitamin E acetate and not nicotine causing this. Thank you for your hard work or, you know, something, whatever. That will go so much longer of a way than just saying, fuck you, Charlie Baker. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You know, it's just not going to go in as far. You catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. So I'll post a link to that down in the description of this video. It's a great article, real quick read. You can share it around. Uh, one more thing I wanted to share here is the uh, Florida. I just... Char I have a little round of applause for Florida right now. We're celebrating Florida. I don't see my man Southern Comfort in the house, but uh, we're celebrating Florida right now. Florida Smoke Free Association posted this tweet. This is a letter from Matt Getz. Uh, this letter from Matt Getz is huge for our industry. It's great to be from a state where leaders truly lead instead of just blindly following the trail of ants. And Matt Getz... 
he wrote a letter to FDA Director Mitch Zeller, which uh, we're going to read right now. And if you don't know who Matt Getz is, you do. I think you do. Nephron. <laughs> Nephron in the chat. You can also catch flies with poop. Hashtag just saying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Florida man vetoes flavor ban. Now, if you don't know who Matt Getz is, I think you do know who Matt Getz is because I saw the name and I thought, I don't know who Matt Getz is. And then I went to his Twitter and Googled him and saw his picture and I went, oh, Matt Getz. Yeah, I know that guy. Chance, I think you. I think we have all seen this guy. Is it this guy? We've seen this guy, right? He's on... Um, maybe it's just me on social media, but they're constant. I constantly see videos of this guy, constantly see pictures of this guy. Matt Getz in Florida. At least I think that's how you say his name. Getz, it's G-E-A-T-Z. Matt Getz, you know this guy, Matt Getz. Well, the letter that he wrote that we're just gonna read real quickly. Uh, it's legitimately pretty good. He wrote this to, uh, uh, whoa. That was too much. That was over the top. He wrote this to Director Mitch Zeller, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration Center for Tobacco Products, Office of the Center Director. Dear Mr. Zeller, he actually says, Dear Director Zeller. Here, let's try to get the whole thing. Maybe not right there. Read along with me, everyone. Dear Director Zeller, thank you for your hard work in handling the many pre-market tobacco applications PMTAs submitted to the Food and Drug Administration by small vapor businesses. In an effort to better understand your PMTA intentions, we are requesting clarification specifically related to PMTA filed by small businesses with potential deficiencies. It is our understanding that these businesses have participated in the federal regulatory process and in a good faith effort to comply with recent FDA PMTA guidelines. However, COVID-19 has placed a well-documented and significant limitations on laboratory testing, which is necessary for full compliance with PMTA guidelines. Additionally, the exceptional cost and the backlog of over 1.7 million PMTA applications puts nearly 14,000 responsible small vaping businesses in a vulnerable position. Many are at risk of permanently closing down their operations without some sort of temporary exemption, ex, exuplation. Come on, Matt. Use words I can understand. While FDA responds to the issues mentioned above. As you are aware, the independent vapor industry functions quite differently than that of the large tobacco industry. The bigger manufacturers rely largely on a network of convenience stores to sell their vapor products. The independent vapor industry largely manufactures lower concentration nicotine vaping liquids sold in dedicated vape shops that are staffed by individuals with specialized training. Additionally, vape shops typically do not allow minors to enter their stores and ensure extensive age verification protocols that differ from convenience stores. Unlike the large tobacco companies, nearly 14,000 small vape shops are in danger of going out of business if the FDA does not delay or make adjustments to their PMTA guidelines. These small businesses support 160,000 jobs and produce an economic impact of over $24 billion. In interest of the economic health for small businesses across the nation, we ask that you work with these small company vapor, with these small vapor businesses to find a reasonable solution to the problems arising from the PMTA requirements. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah, Matt Getz. Fuck yeah, Matt Getz. He sent that letter to Mitch Zeller. So, We'll see what happens. Looks like Matt Getz is definitely on our side. I actually gave him, you know, I don't, I actually gave him a little bit of a follow. I'm not a huge fan. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Matt Getz, but look, he's on our side. I've always said that vaping's not a partisan issue. I'm on the side of vaping. I was talking to, uh, what was that one Democratic convention, uh, Democratic uh, Senator hopeful Henry Miller? who was tweeting about vaping. I was DMing back and forth with him and he's on the left and I'm like, yeah, vaping here. You don't want to hear. Yes. A lot of voters are vapors and he was really kind of, kind of trying to dig into it. I will stand with people that stand for vaping. I will stand for people that stand for science. I will stand for people that stand for harm reduction. And Matt Getz, you know, he takes the Republican sort of point of view on this as sort of the economic impact, right? 14,000 shops, 160,000 employees, you know, $24 billion into the economy. And that's a great way to look at it 
but it's also people's lives and not just their lives from smoking, but their livelihoods from vaping and running these shops and being employees of these shops. So it's interesting, you know, the VTA appeals really well to the right with all of the economic impact of all of this, but I think the science, I think the science of this, and it's gonna take longer, (laughs) but I think the science of this could, uh, you know, could appeal to people on the left. Anyway, I'm gonna post a link down in the description, boop, as well as right there in the chat for this letter from Matt Getz to, uh, to director Mitch, director Mitch Zeller. Anyway, I think, uh, I think I'm gonna save the truth initiative stuff. Uh, I think I'm gonna save the truth initiative stuff maybe for this Tuesday, maybe for next Tuesday, but uh, I've been just, I don't know, digging into the Truth Initiative. I hate this organization so much. They just bother me on every level possible. And I don't know when the Truth Initiative pivoted from preventing the you know the harms from combustion from tobacco cigarettes to suddenly now we want people living nicotine-free lives. It's ridiculous. They want people to live nicotine-free lives despite... <laughs> despite their own scientists saying things like this. The worst thing about nicotine is, this, is that it drives people to smoke, said Naruya. Now, Naruya is their own in-house scientist who, who works in this. She's, she's part of it. If we can move smokers to less harmful nicotine products, we could save thousands of lives. One more time. If we can move smokers to less harmful nicotine products, we can save thousands of lives. But the Truth Initiative still isn't happy enough with that. They need you to live a nicotine-free life. That's right, Steve. They don't know nicotine. They don't. And here's the problem. I know, I know, look, and I know I have got a lot of like, we, we have a pretty broad political spectrum here and I keep the vlog fairly political free. You want to get political? Let's hang out on a Tuesday, bro. Tuesday. We'll talk politics any day of the week. Vaping's not a partisan issue. It's just not. The left comes at it from a different angle than the right does. And there's ways to appeal to both sides. We have science and harm reduction and, you know, people's lives We can appeal to emotion on the left. On the right, we have the fiscal impact, $52 billion a year into the economy, 160,000 plus jobs. That's how you appeal to the the right, to a Republican. There's different ways to do this. And as I said, I stand with those that stand with vaping. Joe Jorgensen, 2020. Anyway, I think that's gonna do it for news and advocacy. I'm gonna save this this, uh, truth initiative stuff for... uh, Maybe a Tuesday, bro, Tuesday, but I'll have links all down in the description for literally everything I talked about, the Veritas Cohort Study, the World Vapors Alliance, all of the CASA, all of the CASA calls to actions. People are texting me. I feel like we never talk about the post office anymore, Adam. Okay, here you go. Hang on. Let me text my buddy Adam real quick. I'm going to text him a link to this. Maybe he'll show up. (laughs) <laughs> I would love that. Uh, Naruya. Oh, Naruya is a guy who works at NYU, actually. Oh, okay. Okay. Naruya works at NYU. That's interesting. In this... Okay, we'll save it. We'll save it. We'll save it. But that's really good to know. Uh, where was I reading in this? Where was I reading in this about Naruya? Uh... Okay, maybe I wasn't reading it in this. I thought Naruya was like a Truth Initiative scientist, like in charge of something at the Truth Initiative. Okay, maybe I'm wrong about that. Appreciate that, Daniel Jones. Appreciate you. So uh, yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for news and advocacy. I'll have links all down in the description to everything we talked about. So uh, I think what I wanna do right now... So what? ...is let's get back over to... uh, Let's get back over to here. Let's do a couple super chats. Saw a couple popped in there during news and advocacy. Yep, that's all you get. What I need is the super chat bumper at like two and a half speed. So I can just go super chats. 
And that's exactly what it would sound like. Ah, all right. Uh, Logan exhales, ready for truth, truth butter churning hour. <laughs> Don't forget your hat fan. Hat fan hasn't made an appearance in, in quite a while. As great as hat fan is and as great as it does actually feel very refreshing, it hurts to wear. It's just, I feel like it's weighing my head down to the ground and it digs in because you can't bend the bill even a little. And I find that super obnoxious. Logan, you're the man. I appreciate you being here. Bradley, hey, Grim, I've been using the off-roof tank uh, and Falcon 2 for a while now. Any ideas on a new sub-ohm or should I go back to an RTA getting bored with these? I haven't had any new hot sub-ohm tanks, really. The PNP coil heads for the Vupu tanks are, are really good. I think they're really great. I've really enjoyed them. Um, Lost Vape has a new sub-tank. It's over here in no man's land somewhere. You know, Lost Vape has a new sub-ohm tank called the UBX. It's good. I mean, it's fine. I wouldn't say it's like leaps and bounds better than an off-roof tank or the Falcon 2. I think the Falcon 2 is kind of one of the best tanks, uh, you know, around. I do have an RTA coming out. You know, I don't, I'm not trying to pimp that or anything, but I do have an RTA coming out uh, if you want to get back into RTAs. But there's a lot of great RTAs out there. You know, if you want some of the best, get an Aromamizer Plus V2 RDTA. You, it will just knock your face in the dirt. It's so good. It's so good, Bradley Chase. Gabe Claus, did you know reindeer poop Skittles? I didn't know that. Is that true? <laughs> Let me Google that. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, wow, look at that. Reindeer do poop Skittles. Wait, is that what Skittles are? Is that what Skittles are, Gabe Claus? Matching carpet, very gracious of you. Yo, yo, dinner with the fam tonight. Catch the replay, though. Hope all's well. Shout out to your internet connection. So far, so good, matching carpet. And if I'm not mistaken, I still owe you a Titan series. We'll get on that. Don't worry. You just got to keep reminding me. Uh, Dimit Knight. Dim, oh, dim lit night. Sorry. Uh, last one for a while. You convinced me to invest in a billet box and they are more, <laughs> they are more than moderately priced. Going back to my OG dead rabbit. Yeah. Well, look, the billet boxes are amazing and I love them. So that's all I'm going to say. Don Loco. That's very gracious of you. Shout out uh, to the birthday boy, Jay Hayes. Wait, okay. Don Loco. Is it really, bir is it really Jay Hayes's birthday? Is it really Jay Hayes's birthday? Happy birthday to Jay Hayes. Happy birthday to Jay Hayes. Happy birthday, dear Jay Hayes. Happy birthday to you. Cheers, Jay Hayes. Happy birthday. I feel like we need to smash a mod now. I'll take a mod out back and just fucking pound on it with a rubber mallet. That's what we do for Jay Hayes' birthday. You didn't know? Swamp Thing. Stop smoking saved my life. It was too late for my wife. Thanks, Nick. Keep up. We know they lie. We do know they lie. I'm sorry it was too late for your wife. I hope that doesn't mean what I think it means, but I love you anyway, man. I hope, I'm glad that you're here. And yes, stopping smoking, and that's the thing that people don't understand is all of this legislation and nonsense is coming from people that have never smoked. And if you have never smoked, then you, then you don't understand it. You don't understand what it's like to smoke cigarettes. You don't know, you don't understand what it's like to wake up at three in the morning coughing. This is what you, I used to do when I was a smoker. Wake up three or four in the morning, just coughing, hacking my guts out. I'd go in the kitchen. I'd drink a bunch of water. I'd try to get this cough under control. I'd go outside and I'd smoke a fucking cigarette and I'd go back to bed. That's the level of addiction that you have with nicotine and cigarettes and tobacco. And it's crazy. It's crazy and you just keep doing it and you keep doing it and you try to quit and I, I call every quit attempt a pause. There's a few times in my life where I paused because I knew even when I quit, I thought I'm definitely gonna smoke again someday. You know, I'm just definitely gonna smoke again someday. It's pausing. Vaping is, you know, it's like you get your life back. You get your lungs back. You get your sense of taste back and it's enjoyable and it's and it's effective. 
Appreciate you, Swamp Thing. Uh, Part-time Vapor, I sent the peach because of the matchy-matchy with the peach liquid. Oh, and the peachy colored billet box. Oh, but I was unable to send the message. Okay, here we go. Golden Boy, Peach Among Worlds, and and then Part-time Vapor's Peach. Appreciate that, bro. Jake Scrapwood, truth is starting to sound more like the temperance movement of the 1930s. Uh, yeah, 100%. Once people... All people have to do is learn a little bit about nicotine and you kind of look at the truth initiative and you go, wait, what a life free of nicotine? Like what are the, is the truth initiative just going to go, well, we need a life free of cigarettes and nicotine and caffeine. Just we decide what you should be able to do. It's, uh, uh it's infuriating Southern comfort watching the Trump Town Hall on Crowder's channel and you at the same damn time. Hell yeah. And you know what, Southern Comfort? I appreciate you doing that. I, Steven Crowder is a much bigger, much more popular YouTuber than I am. He's got, you know, a crew and, you know, hosts and, you know, people that work for him. But I appreciate you being here, Southern Comfort. Enjoy that Trump Town Hall. I'm interested to watch that myself. Twisted Messes is here. This vlog was sponsored by Twisted Messes. This blog is, this blog is sponsored by Twisted Messes. You go to twistedmesses.com, boy, you get some, you get your vape gear. He's got Drag Maxes on there. He's got the Vaporesso uh, X Iron on there. I know for sure he has a lot of the Pioneer RTAs. I know for sure he has, um, Super good liquid on there. I know for sure he carries Indonesian liquids as well. So if you want to get some of that uh, mung bean borgio, yeah, you go. You can go right over to twistedmesses.com and get all of it. Get all of it. I'm just kidding. He doesn't carry any of that stuff. But he should. All right, Twisted Messes. You've, 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 you've pulled my arm and now I have to do some vape mail. Uh, you're thinking of the lady who did the survey study. Okay. Oh, it is. She it is. She is at the NYU School of Public Health, School of Global Public Health. So this quote, this is from an NYU School of Public Health. He, sorry, <laughs> he, she. Oh, it's whatever. Yeah. The worst thing about vape about nicotine is it leads people to smoke. We could save thousands of lives, Raymond. Thousands of lives. That's very interesting. Appreciate that. Whoops, that's not what we're doing. We're not on Tuesday, bro, Tuesday. What day is it? It's Grim Green Vlog Day. That's what it is. Here, let's do some uh, this. Uh, okay. Didn't quite make it back in time, but that's no big deal. It's whatever. Let's open some vape mail. And I believe that tonight is truly and honestly 100% vape mail. I think it's all vape mail. I don't think there's any posters or coffee mugs or beer or anything like that. I think this is actually, actually 100% vape mail. In fact, I'm going to save this to the last because I think I know what's in there. I think it is a... Uh, I think it is a mechanical mod of some sort. This obviously came from China. It's DHL. No idea what's in here, as per usual. Guessing it's gonna be, ooh, whoa, wait, we got something from uh, from Augie Vape here. What are you? The Aug Vape VX217. Aug Vape makes, ooh, this green color is just vomitous. Vomitous. It's a lot like, whoa, that's a nice little button right there. Okay, that's interesting. This is the Vape VX217. It comes with some sort of matchy matchy sub ohm tank. I don't like this green color like at all. That is like, this is straight up like minivan green. That is minivan green right there. That's like your Ford Windstar. What color is your Ford Windstar? Oh, it's like pea green. It's like pea green soup. What does the other color look like? I was going to say, Ogvape makes one of my favorite regulated mods of all time, and that is the V200. Okay, there it is in black. 
A little less ridiculous in black. How do I get this door off of here? How, how, how do you do this? Ooh, what's going on here? Why is there like a... Oh. Oh, it's not even a door. Oh, it's a flip top. Oh, and it can do 21700 or 18650s. Okay, that's actually kind of super dope. All right. Shit. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to that. Using that. Aug vape. Yeah, they make the V200, which is... I mean, truly and honestly, one of my favorite uh, favorite regulated mods of all time. What else do we have here from DHL China? Inakin. Something new from Inakin? Maybe. Who knows? These could just be... Uh, I have a feeling these are just scepters. I have a feeling these are scepter replacements because I couldn't find my scepters and I freaked out. And I told Inakin I couldn't find them, and then they're like, we'll ship you some more. And then I found them, and then I think they shall ship me some. Yeah, they did. That's fine. These are scepter kits. That's okay. We need some more $2 sales. I got some black and some white Inakin scepter kits, which these are really good mouth to lungs. Like, terribly good mouth to lungs. If you like a good mouth to lung, I would recommend the Inakin Scepter. Can I break down this box real quickly while I have you guys here? You know, it just makes my life easier. After the vlog, post vlog, this is a message for all my yo yo Patreon Cool Kids clubs. We're gonna be doing some uh, post vlog hangs in the Discord, in the video chat. In honor of Hooked on Funk. You, you hear Hooked on Funk? In honor of Hooked on Funk. We're gonna be doing it. Tonight. Promise. I don't know where this is from. I think it's from China. It didn't come in a DHL package, so I find that confusing. Cut towards your buddy, not towards your body. Cut the tape. What the fuck kind of box is this? It's the weirdest box on the history of America. Oh my God, what the hell, man? Okay, this is, oh, this is more Endura. This is more Inakin, what? This is the Endura M18. The, oh, and the Chroma Z. Wow, Inakin's got some new hotness right now. Chroma Z, that's the one I actually wanna look at. I have the feeling the Endura is gonna be like the, you know, the, the tube looking one. But I've always really liked the Chroma stuff. Hi. Oh, that's how it opens. Oh, okay, that's what it looks like. That's not super fun. It's what I got right here, it's this. This is the Chroma. This is the Chroma Z. Designed by Phil Basardo and Demetrius Agrafiotis. That's the Chroma Z. That's kind of a letdown, honestly. I was kind of hoping for uh, the old chromas were so cool, and this chroma Z kind of looks a little bit generic. This looks, yeah, see, this is the Endura M18. Doesn't that look like the Scepter? I mean, am I way off? Do these not look similar? Do those not look like very similar devices? Endura M18 with the M18 prism coil and the scepter. These look very similar. I mean, really very similar. I'm glad they taped these up. I want to get a look at this M18. I want to see the size of it. Yeah, it's like the exact same size too. It's like the exact same size. Exact same fit and finish. Exact same everything. It's pretty slick. Look, I'm not going to lie. It's kind of a slick little pod. But, I don't know. You know, there's just, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of vape stuff out there. And after 11 and a half years, I get less and less excited for things. I just kind of had high hopes for that Chroma. That's okay. Maybe they'll vape amazing. And if they look amazing, then it's whatever. Now this, this package comes to us from, from Russia. And I love it. A, I love that there's vapors in Russia. Two, I love that I talk to vapors in Russia. And D, I love that Russia makes some banging, banging mech mods. Oh, this is Infinity. Yes, 
This is, uh, yes, I have an Infinity Mech mod. This is from that same company. Oh, baby. Russian custom mods. Oh, God. Too much tape. You're keeping me between me and my mech mod. Too much tape. This company has a really dope packaging. Comes in a wooden box. There's like a spring-loaded little thing right here. This pops open. Can't see anything. Oh, shit. Wow. Wow. I am so confused by this mech mod. You have no idea. Do you use the same kind of switch? All right. Look at this mech. Look at that hotness. That looks like a lightsaber to me. And I don't know what these vent holes are. I don't think those are the switches. I think the switch is still on the bottom, even though it's it's empty in the bottom and there's a 510 there. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So it is the same switch. Oh, and it's got a spare spring and then a 18650 adapter. Let's get this going. Let's set this up like right now because I want to put this recoil on it. This, uh, this guy will just have to get, you know, sidelined. It'll have to go into no man's land just for a little bit. And that's okay because I'm going to come back to it. I'm going to come back to you, method one. No sweat. But let's get this guy going. How does this... Oh, there's an 18650 adapter in there right now, but I need to get that out of there. Is that even a possibility? Nope. This is only an 18650. Damn. Damn. No, this can't only be an 18650. I refuse to accept that. I refuse. I rebel. I refuse to accept that this is just an 18650 mech mod. If I had the means, I would get this adapter out of here right now. But I don't have any pliers. Oh, come on, man. Shit. Uh, where'd you go? Yeah, you can get it out. You can do it, man. There's a little uh, just threaded in adapter here. There it goes. Let's get you out of there. Boosh. 21,700, okay. I can't, I can't fuck with mech mods that aren't 21,700 anymore. Just can't. I can't go back to a single 18,650 mech mod. It just makes my heart hurt because the battery life is so truly, honestly terrible. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That looks kind of sick. It's kind of got this like ombre look to it. It's black at the bottom. Is that showing up enough? It's kind of heat sink fins. It looks like a lightsaber to me. <sighs> Hitting great. Oh, these little spots right here, there's one on each side. This spot and this spot, you can kind of grip right there. Like that's where your fingers go. <sighs> Love this. Bitchin. All right, Russian custom mods. Stoked on this Mac. These are the same guys that did the Katana, right? That's the company that I'm thinking of. This is the same company. This is called the Bonneville. Man, that's a cool looking Mac. I really like the way this Mac looks. Yeah, it does, Anthony Ramella. 100% has that kind of like dark side lightsaber look to it. Like Ventress would use this. Ventress would use this lightsaber. I kind of want to just keep vaping it. Vlog's over. Bye. I'm just joking. Damn, that's vaping great. It's vaping spectacularly. Well, shit. There you go. That's some mail. We got some China stuff. We got some Anakin stuff. But more importantly, we got a mech mod from freaking Russia that I'm really excited about. I like using it. Look, I'm not saying I'm not excited about the Anakin stuff. It's just a little bit less exciting to me. 
I'm going to use it. I'm going to review it. I'm going to do the whole song and dance because where I land on it is all vape gear can be helpful. Like, sure, something might suck. If I go, this Vaporesso thing, the X iron sucks. It's just not good. Then that's something else. That's kind of warning people. But if something's even like kind of a little bit good, like this has a good restricted lung. This could be helpful for a smoker. And I don't want to stand in the way of a smoker and quitting smoking and getting into vaping, which is why I'm going to do the Inakin Endura M18 review and the Chroma review could help smokers. That's the only way I look at it. Could help smokers. Is it going to appeal to 90% of the hobbyist vaping market? Probably not. Probably not. But it could help. Could help a smoker. I really love this mech. This is a fucking great mech. Man, that's a good mech. Anyway, let's put you over here. Let's, before we do anything else, before we retro vape, and that's what's coming up next, we have to hydrate. Where's Kent? There he is. I love water. I'm glad that I love water so much. It makes it easier to stay hydrated. Hydro homies. Uh, please stay hydrated, my hydro homies. Absolutely. So I guess what we're going to do now is uh, it's just about that time. Oh, you know what? Let's see. Uh, were there any more super chats? Were there any more? Half a bumper. That's what you get this time. Half a bumper. Let's see if there's any more super chats. Oh, yeah, there's a few super chats there. Uh, yeah, that's right. This vlog is sponsored by TwistedMesses.com. Don't forget, the finest selection of Malaysian and Indonesian e-liquid is at TwistedMesses.com. And he's got them for, I'll just say, like 30% off right now. He's running a coupon code that is Kent Hydro Homie. Kent Hydro, homie dog, D-A-W-G. I know it's a long coupon code, but you can try it out. It probably won't work. But don't forget, this vlog is sponsored by Twisted Messes, the importer of Indonesian and Malaysian e-liquids. Southern Comfort uh, and four and a half mil subs, but you know, I ain't missing you. Yeah, look, he does have four and a half million subs. That's fine. I haven't even cracked half a million yet. That's fine. For me, this isn't about subscribers or popularity. This is about... This is about, this is about the vape, you know, that's all this is about. This is about getting smokers to do this instead of fucking kill themselves. <laughs> that's what this is about. Southern comfort. Appreciate you. Uh, he also says he bought a new Harley today. You bought a Harley today. I want to hang out with Southern comfort. He bought a Harley today. He bought a 2020 street glide. Yeah, that looks sick. You even got the little like uh, backpacks kind of going on there. So you can, what do you just fill that up with e-liquid, run it up the border? Just kidding. Appreciate you, Southern Comfort. Not the real Gerard Butler. How you been? Is Kent being a cheapskate? Technically, yes. But so what? I know. $5? $5 with Kent's money? Kent's like Oprah. And he's the biggest importer of Malaysian and Indonesian e-liquids because this vlog is sponsored by TwistedMesses.com. Southern Comfort, didn't trade my HD night train. Keeping that. Okay, well, good. Picks in your email. Well, thank you. Thank you for sending me pics of your of your, uh, of your your Harley Davidson. I appreciate that, dude. Dan Baker, hashtag juice my way. Hey, Grim, hope that moon pie is treating you good, man. Hope all is well. Hashtag juice my way. Uh, it is treating me well in that I haven't vaped it yet. I'm going to, you know. You have you and your fans, they're really adamant about me vaping that banana moon pie. So I feel obligated to do it now. I'm just kidding. I really do want to check it out. Uh, it'll just take me a minute because because I'm grim green and I'm forgetful and I'm busy and just, you know, all sorts of nonsense like that. Finally, clear this text message notification from DHL. OK, now it's about time to dig into a big old box of vape crap from my closet. Well, that was a little more treacherous than I wanted it to be. So this box just says, okay, so this is more, 
This is another solo cabinet mods. And I think last week we did a solo cabinet box as well. And if you remember from back in the day in my videos, I used to have a big Billy cabinet from Ikea that had a Han Solo poster in the door, like a door poster of Han Solo frozen in carbonite, you know, doing that pose. That was the, the old version of this Ikea cabinet. This Ikea cabinet in here, you know, this is where I keep all my mods that you can't even see that. You can't see that. That's fine. That's where I keep all of my mods that I'm not ready to put into a box yet. Just not ready. I love them all so much still. They make their rounds. They come out like every once in a while. Well, when we moved, I put all of my solo cabinet mods into boxes. And this is what was originally like the mods that I didn't want to say goodbye to yet. I didn't want to put into boxes yet. Did not want to put into boxes yet. Uh, oh, shit. Look at that. There's some stuff in here like, look, not that interesting. A Vupu guy. This Vupu guy. I don't even remember the name of it. The Vupu guy with the checker marks on it. Anybody? I don't know what the name of this is. Pretty sure I reviewed it in Vupu and all over California, but I don't remember the name of that. That's in here. Apparently, I liked that enough to not want to let it go. There's an old, old retro vape in here that I did uh, on the vlog. This is that Switch Mods mech mod. And we've done this a couple times, I think, because it's still got that dinky, dinky little round wire build in there. Is the camera going to show that? No, nah, probably not. Tiny, dinky little round wire build in there. It's okay. There is... Ooh, you're pretty. Wow, that's a, that's a really pretty mod. This is a Minikin. This is a Minikin 2, dude. That's the drag two, Jake. Is that the drag two? Is that the drag two? This is the minikin two, stab wood, green, aqua. See, that's cool. How could I possibly get rid of this? I couldn't. In fact, there's two in here. There are two minikins in here. Oh, okay. There's more stuff in here. Two minikins. I liked this one because it reminded me of like the coast of California. Like this would be LA and then this is the ocean. It's mostly green wood, some brown wood, some acrylic down there at the bottom. Minikin too. Man, I used to really, really love these mods. Really, really love these mods. In fact, I might throw my Pioneer mouth to lung RTA on one of these. Oh, that would look cool on there too. That would look cool. I'll have to decide which one I want to keep out. I need to polish this up though. I got some uh, wax from the internet that you use to polish up stab wood. I might, I need to, need, might need to polish these up. This is the drag too. This is definitely the drag too. And I can tell because it says drag on it. This is the one with the, you know, I don't know, resin doors. Remember when everybody loved resin? Yeah. Vupu, drag two. Wasn't my favorite drag. Like the original drag much, much more. Um, I do have a few squonkers in here. This is the Omboy Rage without a bottle in it with the black door. This is the opposite of the one we saw yesterday. The one we saw last week was a black mod with a white door. This is the white mod with the black door. I don't know. I probably might not ever use that again. Drip Tech TS. This is the triple 18650 mechanical drip tech squonker. I, I never really felt strongly towards these. I liked them for a little bit, um, but then I just kind of started hating them. And I don't know why. I think it's just because of squonking. I didn't really, I don't really love squonking very much. Now this mod, this, this is the single, holy shit. All right, we'll get there in a second. This is the single most underrated, comfortable mod of all time. This is the Joytech Evic Primo, and it's that teardrop shape, and it is irreparably comfortable, irreparably comfortable in the hand. Can we use this like right now? See, that's the problem with retro vapes is I just want to use them all. Okay, we can't use this right now. Love this. Miss, I miss Joytech. Remember Joytech? I miss Joytech. So this is my original AugVape V200. Original matte black AugVape V200. Love the hell out of this thing. Just 
eternally will love the hell out of this thing. The button's up here, right there, hidden. It's a click, and it's so. Do you hear those clicks? Do you hear those clicks? What an amazing device. Um, oh yeah, this thing is amazing. So this is a dual parallel unregulated carved wooden box mod that I got from uh, Torch Woodworks. I don't even know if this company is still around anymore, but Torch Woodworks, dual parallel 18650s, and it's got a custom, you know, wooden clicky little flush mount button right there. Look, I'm not gonna lie. I opened this box, this was on top, and I've been using it for the last few days, and then I disassembled it and put it back in the box and tried to like, oh, X surprise when it came out. But this thing uh, is great. And one thing that Casey and I always laughed about is the face on the bottom. Just looks like a sad face. Just meh, meh. I'm a little Torch Woodworks mod. Meh. Love this thing. Love this thing. Oh, man. Rest in peace, James. James from Rig Mod. Um, he gave me a Rig Pig V2. This was one of the final things that I think he ever sent me while he was still with us. But this was the Rig Pig V2. Series mechanical. Flush mount, really squishy button right there. But it was made of brass and Delrin plastic. And it was... Uh, a little series box mod and you had to put the batteries in. There was a battery compartment on the bottom and then the battery compartment on the top, which was kind of a pain in the ass, but rig made just really good stuff. Um, I'm really sad now about James, but this was a great little, uh, great little series box. Great little series box. Um, just a pink Titan. They think this came from uh, Mr. Thomas Crow. This was Casey's pink Titan. I should get her to use this again. I think this came to us via Thomas Crow. What's up with you, Hannibal? How you doing, bro? Thank you for coming out. This thing, holy shit. This is the single ugliest mod in the history of ugly mods. This was the Geek Vape Blade. Blade. Laser. Blazer. This was the Geek Vape Blade. And it just looked like a, a GD clown orgy on here. That's ridiculous. You know who used this forever was my wife, Casey, used this forever. She loved this thing. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Uh, we got a squonker. We got a revenant. You know, I really did like the revenant. I thought this was a superior squonker to the top side. I really liked this. I should get this revenant back out again. I feel like I should. Single 21700. I really liked this squonker. I don't know. I just can't squonk. I don't squonk. I just drip. I just like to drip. Just let me drip. Don't make me squonk, damn it. I feel the peer pressure. Everybody's like, squonk, Nick, squonk. Squonk. No, you don't want it, Dustin. You don't want it. I wouldn't sell that anyway. It's too sentimental to me. Speaking of chromas... See, this is the old school chroma that's a banging little lipo, single lipo battery. It did like 50 watts. That is a cool, slick, stealthy little device. I feel like it's so much cooler than the new chroma. So much cooler than the new chroma. What do we got here? Vaporesso something. What was the name of this? Anybody? I can't remember. I cannot remember the name of this Vaporesso product. It was a Vapor SO something. I remember it had a really dope screen. Should I put some batteries in it so I can at least look at the screen? How does it even open? Okay, apparently I don't know how to vape. Oh, there it is. Dang. Let's put some batteries in here, because why not? Let's just do it. Call the cops. Disregard the constable. Yeah. Hey, there it is. Oh yeah, Vaporesso doesn't say, but that's a cool display. That is a big, beautiful, cool display. I really like this thing. It's probably why I kept it around. It vibrates too when you adjust the wattage and things and the such as, it vibrates. 
Vibration Nation. I might keep this out. See, that's the problem is I always go, oh, I'm going to keep this out. Uh, Horizon Tech Magico. Just the battery. That's all. Magico battery. Another chroma kit for some reason. What the hell is this? Is this a hobo? Is this a little 16340 hobo mech mod? Can anybody ID this for me? It looks like the hobo. It looks like a little hobo. And this the thing about this was your RDA or whatever you were using was recessed down in there. It's like a tiny little thing. It says at the top of what? The Vaporesso thing? Does it really? No, it doesn't. It just says Vaporesso. Oh, you mean when it had batteries in it? Lux. There it is. There's the Vaporesso Lux. Good eye, Trey Watt. Good eye. Anyway, I got this tiny little hobo mech mod. Look at that. Look at that tiny little thing. This is like before the Notion was a thing. Stan just copied this for the Notion. Tiny little Le Petit. It could be the Le Petit Grosse. I thought it was the hobo. For some reason, hobo sticks in my head. Could be. Just a little banger. Keep that around, you know. Um, I have a fucking hexome in here that I didn't even remember that I had. One of a kind, red uh, with the black door and a DHD sticker, and it says hashtag toot life down the side from back in my toot life days. And the serial number on it is 30. What? 10, 10, 30? Was this the one that the door is really hard to get off? Yep. Ugh. Huh. Got a red hexome. Can't, couldn't possibly sell this. Can't possibly part with this. It's just not... Uh, it's just not in my nature, but that's cool as shit. That's cool. Man, I miss having a good hexome. Miss having a good hexome. Loch Ness. That's the Beyond Vape Loch Ness, dude. I used this for so long. So long I used this Loch Ness. Dual 18650. I love the crap out of it. Let's see. I got a Bogan thing here too. Whoa, does this still have a battery in it? Holy shit. Do you still have a uh, Phillips head screwdriver so I can? No, this can't have a battery in it still. This is the Bogan. Okay. Whew. The Bogan. What was the one that was like really super durable? Don't even remember the name of it. The Jackaroo. Yeah, the Jackaroo. Ooh, the Jackaroo. I got a Jackaroo. It's in here in the box. Oh, but wait, there's more. Oh, wow. So this is actually really, really vintage old school. This is an original 18650 tugboat aluminum tugboat focus, you son of a bitch. T fo tugboat aluminum mech mod. That is old school. Yeah, Jackaroo, Sifu, Jackaroo. Tugboat. Good night, Twisted Messes. I saw your super chat. Good night. Good night, buddy. I have my unique, one of a kind, as far as I know, squid. And my the squid, it, this is the one that I used the most. It was like this bluish color. Had like, it looks underwatery. There's a squid like printed on it and it says inked. Squid inked. This is a cool squid. That's a cool, that's a cool squid. Ooh, I love the squids. Mmm. The problem is, this box is just full of cool vape gear, and I just want to keep it out. Asmodus Lustro. That's the one that lit up down the side. Asmodus Lustro. That was pretty fun. What up, tugboat? What else is in here? Freemax Twister. That's boring. Uh, another Inokin Chroma. That's boring. Another Vupu guy. That's boring. This is the one with the with the red, white, and blue, and like the actual diamond plating on it. Vupu thing. What are you? Oh, you're a minikin. You're a minikin, uh, full size minikin. That's a pretty minikin. This is the one that reminds me of California Coast. That is a pretty minikin. Dang. 
Too many cool mods. In fact, so here's another minikin. This was the minikin that Casey Pickle used for a very long time. Green. The green and brown minikin. Look how pretty that is. Fuck yeah, that's cool. That's cool as shit. The problem is, the problem is, I just want to keep all of this stuff out here. E-Leaf? Anybody remember the E-Leaf thing? The little E-Leaf guy that had like the record player texture on the back? I reviewed this and I loved it. I thought it was great. There is a burling, you know, what's this called? Herringbone? Can't remember. Wake. Old school Wake Modco Bigfoot kit in blue. There is an Aegis. Aegis? Some sort of Aegis mini in here. Right there. Little Aegis mini guy. Look at that. How many years old is that? Probably two. Maybe longer. There is also this monster. This came from Leaning Tree Wood Mods, and I wish they were still around. So, you know how I have like my big giant Satan mod? The big giant one. I'm doing a review, and then I got a small one for the Guar. Before I had that, this was like my go to mod. I would use this for everything. I would use this for fiddling. I would use this for building, RDAs, RTAs, everything. It's a lipo powered DNA 200, DNA 150. Was there a DNA 150? I don't think there was a DNA 150. <laughs> this was it. Let's just test it out. No, DNA 250. DNA 250 on the inside. And mostly I just love that purple wood with the big shock of green going like right through it. That is so fucking cool. I love this thing. I love this thing. I love this thing. What else is in here? Last couple things. Oh, SQ, a little uh, SQ squonker. These are good squonkers. We did a Grim Green version of these little uh, Signature Tips SQ squonkers. In fact, speaking of Signature Tips, I am really looking forward to Mr. Just Right One's little Billet Box Boro Tank RBA. Should be getting one of those soon. These are cool. Those were cool squonkers. I have this squonker in here as well. SVC Fractus? Batch one of the SVC Fractus. I don't really ever remember using this, but it is a 3D printed squonker. Single 18650 mech squonker. You got a silicone bottle right there. 3D printed door. Fractus. And it's like printed on the back. It actually feels cool. Like it feels rad. I really like it. Uh, second to lastly, yeah, this V-God thing. I reviewed this. This is from 2017. This is the V-God Pro or something like that. I really loved this thing. Dual parallel or a dual series rather regulated device. And it had that like weird shape along the top and one side was bulgy and one side was not. And it had like this kind of switch that was just like a little lever. I don't even know how to, I don't even know. A little lever. And lastly, I guess lastly, but certainly not leastly, is there a battery in here? Holy shit, there's a battery in here. Dang, I've had a 26650 battery just sitting in this box. That's probably fine. It's on a DNA. This is, does anybody remember uh, Axis Vapes M17? Well, this was an M17 Mini that I purchased at Vape Showcase in Dallas. Uh, and it turns out that it's terrible because it's just a DNA 75 and it constantly, constantly gives you atomizer warnings, Co constantly gives you atomizer warnings. I don't know why you thought you could get 75 Watts out of a single 26, 650, but the problem is single 26, 650 mods are just terrible. They're, they're just bad, but I rocked this. I rocked this for a while. It was that serious, like pink, pink, purple galaxy action. It's not bad. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. But I think, shit, I think that's everything. I'm missing a door. I'm missing the battery case on my minikin. But that's everything. I'm going to keep a few things out. I'm going to keep this minikin out. I'm going to keep this pink Titan out. And, uh, no, 
I can't keep the squid out. I can't keep all of this out. That's the problem. I want to, but I can't. Loch Ness. God, I used to love that thing. The blade. Got to put the blade away. The revenant. Got to put the revenant away. You have to go away. You have to go away. Can't keep all of these out. Yeah. You have to go away. Yep. These just have to go away. I'm saving these. You know what? I'm saving these for someday when I have a really big office and I can just line up every mod and like every device that I've ever had. <laughs> just line them all up. Well, there you go. I'm also going to keep out this Vaporesso. Uh, what did we decide the name of this was? Lux? Vaporesso Lux is staying out too. Rig Pig might stay out too because no, I have a, that series atomizer is way too big for this. Okay, Rig Pig is going to go away. Hex is going to go away. Jackaroo, Tugboat, all going to go away. All going to go away back into the closet until, you know, 2023 when we decide to go through the, through the closet boxes again. Oh, yeah. So there you go. There's a little bit of retro vaping. Here's what I'm keeping out. This minikin. I just love it. I think it looks cool. I love how shiny it is. Uh, I've always liked the Asmodus minikins and it's amazing. Daniel, two trips. You want to buy that V got off me? We could talk about it. We could talk about it. We, if you'd be down for a trade, I don't want to sell it for like cash money, but if you got anything to trade, even interesting trades, it doesn't have to be vape stuff. You know, if you have, uh, I don't know, something worth trading, let me know. I'm a big fan of bartering. Big fan of bartering there. I'm keeping out the Vaporesso Lux just because I really remember liking this thing a lot and I just want to use it again. No real rhyme or reason. I just like Vaporesso and I think, man, I would just wish Chinese companies would stick with their products a little bit longer than like three months because it's like every three months there's something new. You know, Vaporesso's released you know, 50 fucking things since this, but the Lux is still rad. <laughs> the Lux is still dope. And keeping out the Pink Titan. I'm going to get Casey Pickle to be using this Pink Titan again that we got so graciously from Thomas the Crow. Crow. So that's what I'm keeping out. That was one box. We have a bunch more boxes. And like I said, the longer that we do the boxes, the farther back in time we're going to go. Eventually, we're going to get down to 2009. That's going to be when we hit the tackle box. Let me do a couple of these super chats before we taste any liquid, if there is any. Kent said, good night. Good night, Kent. I love you, bro. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Hamish, why? Well, because Grim Green, of course, busy doing COVID school pickups, need to rewind, stat, kiss, kiss for Schneeko and Pickle. Hamish, I, I, I'm glad that our paths have crossed. Uh, thank you for being who you are. I appreciate all the support you give me. Daniel Two Trips, that's right. You want to buy that V-God? Look, we can talk about it. Like I said, Daniel Two Trips, maybe let's do uh, a little bit of a barter, you know, a little bit of a, some hot trading action. Maybe we can trade something. What do you got for me? What do you got for me? Doesn't have to have to be vape stuff. Could just be like, look, I have a VHS copy of The Empire Strikes Back from 1984. I'll be like, yeah, fuck yeah. I'll definitely trade you for that. You know, I'm looking for some guar vinyl. If anybody's got any guar vinyl, if anybody's got any vinyl in general, I'm always going to trade vape gear for vinyl. But anyway, the time has come dun, 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 to say bears bear. Dun, 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 to taste the juice. Dun, dun, dun. The time has come. A fact's a fact. It belongs to you. Let's give it back. Midnight Oil. Come on, go listen to that song and tell me it's not a banger. Cheers. Also, cheers, Hooked on Funk. Okay, so now we're going to taste some liquid. 
I, you guys have to vote on this. I have one that is a crazy Super Sup Pie liquid. This is that weird Japanese e-liquid from Super Sup Pie. All I can see on here is it's called Cranberry, okay? So we have this box that literally just says Cranberry on it. So that could be a thing. Or we have Carmelia Tobacco. It's just called Tabac. So do we do the tobacco or cranberry? Tobacco or cranberry, please vote now. I know there's a lag. Tobacco or cranberry, please vote now. Tobacco or cranberry. Tobacco, caramel tobacco, cranberry. Caramel tobacco, cranberry. Caramel tobacco, cranberry, please vote now. I await your votes. You have Sepultura, whoa. Uh, that could be worth something. Uh, All right, coming out of the gate. Cranberries looking strong. Cranberry. There's a few tobaccos in there. Tobacco. I see cranberry. I see cranberry. I see cranberry. I see mix them. I don't want to mix them. I see cranberry. I see banana pie. Uh, cranberries off to a really strong lead. Everybody, cranberry, 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 tobacco, cranberry, 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 tobacco, cranberry, cran, cranberry, cran, cranberry, cranberry. All right. I appreciate you voting. Moon pie. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Jones, they both sound awful. Well, luckily, you don't have to vape them. You don't have to vape them, bro. But what I am going to have to do... Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, there it is. I'm going to have to... Uh, we're going to have to DIY this just a little bit. You know, we're going to pull our best uh, Fresh 03 impression, our best Wayne Walker impression, because we got to add nicotine to this nonsense because it is a zero milligram short fill. Oh, come on. Oh my God. Huh, all right. This might be a little bit more difficult than I thought it would be. Oh. Got it. Don't worry. I just had to use my really sharp illegal knife. It's whatever. You got to add some nicotine to it. So what I have is a, uh, I can't see without my glasses. I can't see without my glasses. Uh, nicotine warning. Some of the products featured right now in this video are going to contain nicotine because I am choosing to add nicotine to them. So I have a little Nick shot here from the UK. This is Nick Nick. Nick, 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 nicotine. <laughs> We're going to add it to the 60 mil to get us to three milligrams of nicotine. And as well, you know, we kind of dilute that flavor down. You don't just want to vape a zero milligram short fill on its own. What are you crazy? You lunatic. Why would you do that? I can't believe you would do that. That's crazy. Just kidding. All right. Cranberry it is. Let's give it a little bit of a... Let's give it a little bit of a shake. Here, we, we need some uh, shaking music. Yeah, let's get some shaking music going here. I'm just going to shake this up. I'm just going to shake this up as best we can. Uh, in the past, I have liked these liquids. I have liked these liquids. Okay, that's enough music. We're gonna see how this cranberry goes. Um, uh, oh, this comes from Differ Vape UK. Yeah, they did the Femme Fatale Super Sup Pie. It says, uh, neon signs of Tokyo, futuristic scenarios, acid atmosphere, Super Senpai reflects the essence of acid perception by strengthening it with the acidic flavors. The future is now. Really, is the future now? The Femme Fatale e-liquid, even though it had the worst branding on earth, I loved it. I loved the Femme Fatale stuff. So I feel like that's substantially shaken. What's up, Apaka? How you doing, bro? Haven't seen you around, man. Hope you're doing great. Hope you and the fam are doing awesome, Apaka. You know, I miss ECC. ECC was the time when we could get all of the Southern California fam like together and hang out. And then now we have no ECC and we don't get to hang out anymore. Apaka, you were one of the people I looked forward to. I was like, damn it. We, I get to see a PACA. 
Not anymore. Not anymore. Let's do a quick knuckle test of this cranberry. Okay. So what we're going to be tasting this out of here, this is a, uh, this is a rye 1.2 RDA. Sorry, I got to go full Russian hacker. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to see anything. This is a rye 1.2 RDA. I have some MTurk aliens installed in here. I freshly re-wicked this with some cotton bacon prime. Just happens to be my favorite cotton in the freaking market. Let's see. Yeah, vapors are happening. Let's get these nice and uh, saturated. Oh yeah, that's great. Let's get my airflow all adjusted here on the rye, how I like it. It belongs to them. Let's get that back. Bam, bam, bam. Let's have an inaugural toot. The knuckle test was inconclusive. Let's have an inaugural toot. There's a 0.25 at 90 watts. Cheers. Okay. Okay, fine. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is you're going to get some hold music like this. And then I'm just going to sit back with this for a hot second and just vape it. And I'll come back and talk about it. Okay, okay, fine. So, I was really worried. You still voting for tobacco there, Daniel? Let me throw some tobacco on top of this. I was really worried by the cranberry. I was crossing my fingers that you guys wouldn't pick cranberry. But that's okay, because we're here and we're tasting the cranberry. I thought for sure, like beyond a shadow of a doubt, that this would taste like Christmas, you know, just, it's going to taste like Christmas. It's going to taste like a Christmas wreath or something in my mouth. Cause cranberries, I, I picture like cranberry sauce that comes out of the can, you know, that's what I was picking. That's what I was picturing from cranberry to dingleberry. Listen, you dingleberry cranberries. Uh, I get almost no cranberry from this. It's really good. It's delicious. It's sweet, it's flavorful, maybe a little bit of cranberry, but it's mostly, I get like a mandarin orange type of flavor from it, which is making no sense right now. It's literally making no sense right now. No sense at all. It doesn't really taste like cranberry. Maybe a little bit, maybe like the sweetest, like you're, you're, you're on a longboard on the freeway and you're just drinking ocean spray, listening to Fleetwood Mac, maybe a slight hint of cranberry, but it's mostly just sweet, right? It tastes like, it almost tastes like cranberry orange to me, Tabitha. I know you said cran apple. 
It kind of gets me, gives me like a, there is a little appleness happening here. It doesn't taste like Christmas. It doesn't taste like cranberry, really. It kind of is just, it's borderline like hot sweetness. I get a little bit of cranberry, maybe a little bit of apple, maybe a little bit of like mandarin orange in here. It's delightful. Like I'm definitely going to vape this bottle of it. I could see it. I like vaping it. I just don't get a lot of cranberry. It feels like there's just a, a, a whisper, like a little of culotta in this. I get a little slight like cooling sensation from it. Slight little cooling sensation from it. But honestly, uh, it's pretty good. The cranberry from Supa Sapai. I'm pretty sure this is an e, a, a UK e-liquid brand. Very nice. Would recommend. Even if you don't like cranberry, I still would recommend this because it's very... I don't know. It's just very sweet and satisfying. Give it a name. I know. Look, I agree. If And here's the thing. I know I do not like cranberry, really. I don't want a cranberry vape. And if I was in a vape shop or I was online and I'm looking at e-liquid flavors from this company, I would have passed this up completely. I would have said, cranberry? Get bent. That's going to taste like a Christmas wreath in my mouth. It doesn't. It's actually really delicious. And this is a liquid I would have never picked out for myself. Would have never, ever, ever picked out for myself. But here we are. And we're vaping it. And it's effing delicious balls. It's honestly really very good. It, it does have like a fall sort of, uh, a fall sort of uh, flavor to it. All right, there you go. Well, thanks for helping me pick out the liquid tasting. I think what I want to do next week, I won't spoil it. I think what I want to do next week in the vlog is I'm going to make a post on YouTube and it's just going to say, pick, choose your own adventure. And I'm going to let somebody else choose the order of the segments for the vlog. That's what we're going to do. It'll be dealer's choice. Mix up the segments however you want. The only rule is you can't put news and advocacy last and then everything else is all up in the air. We might start with a liquid tasting. We might start... We might start with, you know, I don't know, vape mail. We'll figure it out. But yeah, dealer's choice next week. So that's going to bring us, damn, we always run long. That's going to bring us right here to the end of the vlog. And I don't have a record picked out, but I do have a getting to know Grim Green real quick. Generally, what we do on the Getting to Know Grim Green segment of the vlog is I, I'll pick out a record from my small record collection. I'll talk about it. You know, every record has a story behind it. And I'll usually share a record. Last week, we did Dr. Dre, you know, Dr. Freaking Dre. We added two bangers to the Spotify playlist. I have a running Spotify playlist on Spotify that I'll be linking to down in the description that has tracks from every record that we've discussed here on the Getting to Know Grim Green portion of the vlog. But what I have for you tonight is we did, when did we do the Swamp Donkey? Was the Swamp Donkey last week or the week before? Don't remember, but I showed you guys a Swamp Donkey video. We were playing live and we were playing live and it was the Swamp Donkey. What I have for you this week is another video. Oh my gosh, it's another video. And look, we're already running long. I get it. It's a little on the long side. This is a six minute song. And if you guys are cool with sitting here and listening to six minutes of music that I used to play, I'd really appreciate it. What you're about to hear is the band that I, was that two weeks ago, Master Hyper? All right. Two weeks ago, we did the, the Swamp Donkey. Now, this week, I'm going to play you guys a YouTube video of the band that I started right as like the Swamp Donkey was kind of winding down. Like as I was exiting the Swamp Donkey, uh, I started this, this band 
with uh, the guitar player, Rich, who was also playing in the Swamp Donkey at the time. Um, our buddy Metal Jeff from Reno, Nevada. I, I can post his Instagram down below. You can, he's an artist from Reno, Nevada. Um, they changed their name to Gravity Lord. But before they were known as Gravity Lord, they were known as Glacier. Yeah. I wanted to start a one-man black metal band. I was going through a real black metal phase at that time. Like, not even like well-produced black metal. Like, horrible Norwegian black metal that kind of just sounds like a wind tunnel, you know? It doesn't really even barely sound like music. <laughs> it just sounds like it was, you know, recorded. Like I've used this before, but like recorded on a Fisher Price tape recorder in inside of a cave or something. Just shrieky, terrible, true cult Norwegian black metal. And I was going through a huge phase of it at this time. And I just thought, that's so fucking cool. I'm going to start a one-man black metal band. And I'm going to call it Glacier because... I don't want it to just be black metal, but I want it to be doom metal. I wanted slow, doom, sludgy, blacky riffs. And uh, I, I, I told Jeff about this, and he's like, oh, I play drums. I can play drums. And I said, oh, okay, cool. Well, look, we, got we got, kind of got a band going now. You know, me and Jeff, we're starting Glacier. And then Richard heard about it, and he's like, I want in on Glacier. And so I said, bro you're, you're already my bandmate in donkey. Of course, let's start glacier. Let's do glacier. Let's do the damn thing. And then our other buddy, Daniel also played guitar. And I knew Daniel because Daniel, I don't want to out Daniel like too embarrassingly right now, but he was the manager of the hot topic store in Reno, Nevada. He was the manager of hot topic for a number of years. And that's how I met him is I would go into hot topic and we would just talk about music all the time. And so that's how I know Daniel. And then Daniel joined Glacier. So we were legit like four piece band and we were a band for about a year and a half before we ever even played a show. Never even played a show. <laughs> we just practiced. We just like don't practice, practice, practice. And we wrote these long, heavy, heavy songs. So I'm going to do, uh, are there any, uh, are there any super chats left to do? Are there any super chats here? Uh, we got, uh, Lusimo here. Let me do a couple of these super chats before we get to this video. Lusimo, maybe 3d print 26, 650 and 2650 adapters for the MC 21, 700s. That's what I need. That's what I need is a 21, 700 in that, in that, uh, in that, uh, M16, M17 rather. You know, you can't pimp websites, but where can I procure some 21700 batteries? Most of the sites I support don't carry them or don't have them in stock. IMRbatteries.com, Anthony Ramella. IMRbatteries.com. That's the way to go. Joey Johnson. Uh, Little Italy, buddy. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. What would you trade for an Asmodus Kodama? I miss you, buddy. I don't know. I don't know what I would trade. Surprise me. Hit me up an email. NickGrimGreen.com. Just if you saw something in the retro vape, I'll either just tell you no, or I'll say, what do you got to offer? You know, what do you got? What do you got? We can trade. We can trade whatever. Doesn't even have to be vape gear. Uh, and then lastly, we got one here from Daniel. Handmade framed stormtrooper do it? Oh, maybe. You know what? Let's share some pictures via email. Email me, nick at grimgreen.com. Promise. Okay, because what I'm going to do is, this is how we're just going to kind of take out the vlog. I'm going to play this Glacier song I'll meet you back here at the end, but this was a song, this was my favorite song that we did, that we wrote. It's long, it's like six and a half minutes long, but it is pure, awesome, heavy, really kind of fuzzy, really stonery metal. It's just heavy and heavy. <laughs> uh, I'm in the whole shot of it, but I have my back to the camera. So the guitar strap that you see going, that's that's me. So. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'll, I'll meet you back here right after the song to say goodbye to everybody. But this is performing at Fort Ryland in Reno, Nevada. This is circa 2014, maybe 2013. Got to be 2013. Uh, this is Glacier performing Calypso. Get out of here! 
Sure. That that was the mighty glacier. <laughs> um, yeah. And then I, I forgot we had a singer. We, we had a singer, Ryan. Uh, Ryan played uh, with another local Reno hardcore band and was not playing with anybody at the time. And Richard was like, Ryan, he's he's a good vocalist. And I said, what does he do? And he's like, oh, he just kind of yells. And I'm like, oh, perfect. Yeah, cool. That's what we need. That's what we need. We just need a guy that will just yell and scream gibberish words. I don't even know what that song was about. Couldn't even tell you. It was called Calypso, and me and Richard wrote it, and that's it. That's all, <laughs> that's all I remember. But we could not seem to write a song lo- less than like seven minutes long. Less than seven minutes long. But that was it. That was my vision. That was Glacier. That's the band I started shortly after the Swamp Donkey. I played with Glacier for a number of years, uh, and then and then I had to quit because honestly, this is kind of the sad story part of it. I had to quit because of Grim Green. <laughs> I couldn't work and go to band practice and play shows and do Grim Green stuff. So I decided to stop playing in Glacier to focus more on Grim Green stuff. And here we are. That's where we ended up. That's where we ended up. But uh, yeah, I think that I think we ran way too long. I appreciate. I really do appreciate you guys coming out. I say this every week, but you guys that make it to the end of the vlog, you're literally my favorite people on earth. And if I ever get the chance to meet you in real life... We can just go in for a post-COVID hug, maybe some crisp high fives, maybe some elbow bumps, maybe just some waving from across the room, some awkward waving, you know? That's always like a, hi, you're waving at me. Um, There is a band camp with uh, a few more Glacier songs on it. I'll put that link down in the description as well because, look, we had a couple bangers. Calypso is a banger, and it sounds much better recorded than it does live. The recording sounds great. Great, heavy, just heavy, just brown note, heavy, empty your bowels, heavy. But anyway, I appreciate you guys coming out. It's the vlog, it's Thursday. I love the vlog and I'm glad you love the vlog. Let me take a quick look and make sure I didn't forget anything, although I rarely do anymore, rarely do anymore. No, we're good. 
we're all good in the hood. So uh, seriously, guys, thank you so, so much for coming out. So much for coming out. Really appreciate it. Uh, I'll be back here uh, Tuesday for Tuesday, bro. Tuesday, we're going to be talking about a lot of vape science. In fact, I'll be here Monday, hopefully for a build stream. Don't know what it's going to be yet, but it it, sh it should be good. Um, to all of my Yo Yo A Cool Kids Club, I will see you on the Discord. We're going to have a little beer hang session. Appreciate you guys. But uh, thank you so much for coming out. Remember that no matter what anybody tells you, vaping is still at least 95% less harmful than burning deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes. So yeah, you guys, no matter what is in your hand, absolutely keep on vaping. Be excellent to each other, you guys. Okay? Peace.